bring back the dinosaurs. You know, that was that was always a always a promise of the future. When I when I was gro growing up in the, in in the sixties. Dan, the first question I had for you was sort of why this particular species? Colossal is a de-extinction company, right? And so we want to, you know, uh, de-extinct numerous species. We invested a lot of infrastructure in our dodo, in our avian genomics group for our dodo project. And then we got to know Peter, right? And, and as a as a dinosaur fan, as a de-extinction fan, obviously I knew about the MOA, but then when I started to learn about some of the cultural cultural heritage and just the backstory on the MOA, I just got more and more excited, right? And the, the, the MOA is just truly unique, right? And its place in the New Zealand ecosystem is unique, the, the, the place with the Maori is unique. And uh, Peter and I started talking about it and Peter's like, Peter was actually kind of disappointed that it wasn't already on the list and highly encouraged me, uh, Peter and Fran, highly encouraged us to, to, to work on it. And um, we just got more and more excited the more we learned. But obviously, we would never work on something like this without the support of, of folks like uh, the Naitahu and, and others. Right. And so, uh, you know, it was one of those kind of dream come trues that that Peter got us introduced to the right people. And then we started having conversations and built this collaboration. So it, it is kind of, you know, I think it is kind of one of the closest things to a dinosaur that that existed. Right. And so if you're a fan of Jurassic Park, if you're a fan of this, then I think it's it, it's just pretty awesome. So I, I it was a no brainer for us. But Peter really kind of opened the gates uh, uh, for our, it to be actually be possible. Fran and I invested in Colossal on the basis that the MOA gets um, added added to the um, list. It was um, that, that was a condition of our of our investment. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's very very influent very influential in his in his uh, in his uh, suggestions, if you will. And all actually all of the money that Peter and Fran and a few others invested have been earmarked only for Dota or for a MOA, which is great. This is your first time sort of investing in Colossal, as far as I'm aware. Um, how did you how did you become aware of this the, the this phenomena of de extinction? So I've always sort of known about the concept of de extinction ever since I was a kid. When 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 you know when I was looking forward to the day that we'd be flying around on personal jetpacks and and <laughs> and flying cars and bring back the dinosaurs, you know that was that was always a always a promise of the future. When I when I was grow, growing up in the in in the sixties, so I've I've always been aware of the concept of it, not not understanding anything about the science. It was it was Mike Mike Doherty, who's a fil, who's a filmmaker who did who did Krampus. He shot that down down here about seven or eight years ago, and so I got to know him quite well. And Mike is involved with with um with a colossal. You know, he's sort of filming their journey through these. This, uh, this uh, process, and so Mike said, "I think that you should meet meet these guys because I think I think that they're doing doing interesting things, and you might you might want to talk talk to them." So, um, so it was through Mike um, Do Doherty that we, that that we got uh, that that we we got introduced to Ben. Really, what has sort of the science fiction of the past kind of gotten wrong about the sort of de extinction process? I'll tell you first, uh, amber is not a good. DNA storage is highly porous. It was mostly in hot places, you know, and and we can only bring back uh, recently extinct species, right? And so everyone, some people love that answer, some people don't because they love Jurassic Park. But uh, you know, right now the oldest DNA we're working at with is about 1.2 million years, and, and over time DNA degrades. And what's interesting is, you know, sometimes people put mammoths in their brain with, you know, the actual uh, dinosaurs, but there's about 65 million years between that, right? And the oldest DNA we're working with is about a million, five, two million five uh, years. And we can go back right now about as far as two million, but at some point, a lot of those uh, uh, bones turn to fossils, right? And so uh, they turn to rock. And so there's no current ways to extract TNA from rock because all of the, the material is lost at that point, right? And so I think that's one of the biggest um, things that people, when they think about it and they think about like the science of Jurassic Park and others that they get wrong, that you could either get DNA from dinosaurs, you get DNA from amber, and you could just do anything with these technologies, but you really need a close living relative. You need the editing tools and engineering tools, which we have, but then you also got to have some semblance of of the uh, uh, previous species. And so we've been sampling uh, MOA bones uh, since last uh, October 
uh, with Peter and, and Paul and others. One of our other collaborators that we got introduced to through Peter was Paul uh, Schofield, which is one of the top MO researchers in the world. And uh, we actually first sampled, you know, Peter actually has uh, three to 400 uh, great MOA bones that we actually sampled. And you do that process by looking at the bone, doing an analysis of where to drill. You drill in and take little pieces of samples, right? That we then go through a destructive uh, uh, process of sequencing and under and taking those little pieces of, of DNA, putting them in this destructive process that then analyzes and understands what the letters were from that. And we're also working with the Canterbury Museum uh, in Christchurch around this too. And we've, we've been sampling there. So, you know, kind of like our mammoth project that we have over a hundred samples to get good DNA, it is a little bit of luck of the draw. So you have to go through a, a process of, of sampling a lot of different uh, pieces of bone in order to do that. Just to give, give you a sort of a, a sense of that, I mean, I, I, we've collected about you know, three, three, four hundred mo mo bones. And so when Colossal came down to New Zealand, we unwrapped all, all the bones. They looked at them one by one. And if a bone is porous and it, it's lightweight, it's not that the DNA is going to be really bad in it because, because it means that it's all been leached out, washed out. So they inspected each bone and, and of the um, and of the three, four hundred bones, only 25 of them were deemed to have, have potential D DNA. Only 25 out of the 400. So then they sampled them, and, and of the 25 that were sampled, only two produced um, um, viable D D DNA, which was a, a, a stout legged, legged mower and a bush, bush mower. So because there's nine, there's nine um, uh, spe species of mower, and I've, in, in our bones, I've got you know the bones that the, the bones that we've got sort of cover cover all nine species. So it was just so so really, you know, out of 400 bones, we ended up with two viable sources of, D, of DNA. So that just show, shows you how, how what, what, the, what the mathematical um, issue is here. So just finding a moa bone is by no means um, going to give you the DNA that you need. One thing that question I had for all of you was sort of like outside of the um, sort of amazing aspect of this. We can thinking about science fiction stories of sort of like what is the benefit immediately to you know, living species to, you know, humankind um, of doing something like this, um, other than the fact that we can. So all the technologies that we make, which include uh, doing population genetics, understanding, uh, you know, building new technologies to engineer in genetic diversity, uh, biobanking, and actually like taking samples and putting in and storing them, as well as all the ancient DNA research that comes from the sample. So we learn a lot about the history from all of this by um, by looking at the DNA, like we learn about migratory patterns and all this, for, they're doing this anthropologically with humans, they're doing this, we're doing this with mammoth and whatnot. So we learn a lot about ourselves uh, through these processes. We learn a lot about like what the impact was. Uh, we understand population genetics. When did species start to go extinct? When was there too much inbreeding because the population is too much? So we learn a lot and then we can biobank and then we can also develop new tools that can help conservation, right? So like we're working on a lot of different tools and all the tools that Colossal makes on the path to any of our projects that have an application that, to conservation we give to the world for free. And one of the things that we feel very passionately about and, and that's very different about this project versus all the other projects we've ever worked on is while we've collaborated on some level with indigenous people groups, Naitahu Research Center is truly the lead, right? And so we were, I, I see them almost as like a board of directors and we we aren't, you know, working in a lab and then just kind of giving them random updates, right? We're working with them. And so as they help build out the strategy, not just for MOA, but also for other uh, Tonga and, 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 and spiritually relevant and, and sacred species to to their people. Well, then we will we will then you know work on that. So helping them think through biobanking, helping them think population genetics, helping them look at kind of you know from their most endangered birds, right? How can we use bioacoustics and AI to actually uh, locate populations of them? How can we get samples from them and put them in freezers? How can we do genetics on them so we really understand the impacts of their loss to ecology? So all of these create a wealth of knowledge for us to understand how uh, how they can be better stewards of uh, the ecosystem. Because a lot of the work that the Naitai Research Center and others and, and, and Kyle and others and team do around ecological preservation, right? And so if we can give them new tools, you know, through this journey together that we invest in, um, you know, I, I think it's a win-win for for everyone as well as for conservation and, and existing species. Peter, can you maybe speak a little bit to like why this feels like a particularly uh, important or special things from a cultural standpoint. 
particularly in New Zealand. I mean, the moa is is a is a as a New Zealand bird. I mean, I don't think it, it um, existed in any in any other country in the world. It's a very um, unique New Zealand bird, and and um and even though it's been extinct for for six hundred years, as as New Zealand kids, we we grew up. Uh, with stories about the moa, it was the biggest bird in the world. We were very pr proud about having the biggest bird. And and the more the more that you learn about it, you you realise that the Maori people were were so dependent on this bird that they that they arrived uh, um, um, from Polynesia in about twelve ninety ish, thirteen hundred, and and the, and they were immediately had the source of protein that these big animals that they could use for protein. They could use their skins and feathers for for our clothing their bones for tools and so the, you know the, it, it was it was an incredible re, um resource for them and, and 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 it's probably one of the first examples in the world of over over resourcing i think is it is it the term they ultimately became um extinct because of that it, it is a very important bird for maori history and so that is why naitahu who were, who were a south island tribe because we, because we want to bring back the south island giant moa so so the particular maori tribe and in most of the South Island is a Naitahu, and so they are on as um, partners, as Ben says, to bring back this bird, which is very, very important to their culture. Gentlemen, this is brilliant. I will let you go. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day.